The last lesson in chapter three deals with linear quadratic systems. What is a linear quadratic system? Do you remember solving a system of equations, linear equations back in grade 10? You had two lines and you had to find where they intersected. That was solving a system of linear uh, equations. So a linear quadratic system is just what it says it is. It's how does a line intersect with a parabola? So if I have a quadratic like this and I have a line through it like this, then you would be able to find the two points of intersection. The key thing is when you're solving these is that you don't just find an X value, you have to find the coordinate, right? So find coordinates, find coordinates. Just like you did with linear systems. Remember you found the X's, either you use substitution or elimination or comparison. So you wanna find where is the height of this function the same as the height of this function? Now you can see that you could have a system where you have two solutions, or I could do something like maybe my line was here and it never crossed. So I might have no solution. Or of course, there's always the possibility of this line just passing through one point. So again, you can have three types of solutions. And the question is, is there a way to determine how many solutions you have? And the answer is yes, and I'm going to get to that in a few minutes. So let's talk about how would we solve for these two points? Well, if you have two equations, let's say I give you this equation here. So I'm going to give you minus x squared minus 2x plus 3. And I have another equation and it's going to say y plus 1 is equal to minus 2x. So you can see from this that I have a quadratic equation here denoted by the square, right? The square means second degree, quadratic. And this is a linear function, y plus 1 equals minus 2x. So the first thing you would want to do is rewrite this in a format that just says y equals. So that means y is equal to minus 2x. I bring the 1 over here, minus 1. And now that I have the equations written in the same format, i.e. y equals this and y equals this, I can set them equal to each other and simply solve. So this is like a comparison method that you would have done for linear systems. So I say minus x squared minus 2x plus 3 is going to be equal to minus 2x minus 1. So in this format, you can obviously see that I, I don't know exactly what the answer is, but use a little bit of algebra here, move things around. Um, I'm going to bring the minus 2x over here, and that would give me minus 2x squared minus 2x plus 2x when I bring it over. So that gets rid of the 2x's, or the x terms altogether. And 3 plus 1 plus 4 is equal to 0. So that's the same thing as me saying x squared is equal to 4. So that means x is equal to plus or minus 2. So again, this isn't the solution now. This is the x-coordinate of where the graph, the two graphs will intersect. So you think if you set them equal to each other, that's going to tell you where they are equal. So to find the y-coordinate, I would probably plug it into the linear equation because it's easier to solve, but you will get the same answer if you plugged in a positive 2 here or a positive 2 up here. Believe me, you can try it on your own. So if I plugged in 2 here, I would have, so I'm going to say when x is equal to 2, y is equal to minus 2 times 2 minus 1. So that's minus 4, minus 1 is minus 5. So that means 2 and minus 5 is one of the points of intersection. The other one, I have to also plug in x is minus 2 and I would have y equals minus 2 times minus 2 minus 1, and that would be 3. So um, x is minus 2, minus 2, 3. 
is a point of intersection, I'm going to say, a poi. It's a poi, a point of intersection. So that's where the two functions intersect. Not This is not the graph, obviously, because this is a concave down parabola, and this is a, a line with negative slope. So you could graph them and find the point of intersection. Um, maybe these would have been okay to find, but if you end up with some sort of decimal answer, obviously graphing is going to be a very difficult uh, task for you to perform. Okay, so it's very simple. The only thing is a little bit of calculation. Now, what if I um, decided to figure out how many points of intersection I would have? Let's bring that up as we do. Um, I'm going to do question number 10 on your in your textbook, and that's on page 199. So I'm going to do page 199, number 10. This is probably going to be all you're going to need to know. So it says a daredevil jumps off the CN Tower and falls freely for several seconds before releasing his parachute. His height, h, t in meters, t seconds after jumping can be modified modeled by this function. Modified. No, we're going to modify his equation. So 4.9 t squared. You do recognize that that's um, acceleration due to gravity. Maybe you did that in another course because 2 times that would be minus 9.8. You'll do that a lot when you do calculus. Okay, so I have minus 4t plus 142. So you have some sort of concave down parabola. The height, the initial height, we started at 360 meters, right? Oops, sorry, that wasn't on the page. Okay, so he was 360 meters in the air when he jumped out of this Oh, he jumped off the CN Tower. Oh, he's pretty crazy. So he comes up, he goes down like this. Do, 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 do. At some point, he releases his parachute, and then he has a more um, gentle decline. So this is the line, and we're trying to find this point when, his, when he released his parachute. So it says you kind of jump out of a plane, and you have a parabolic shape, and then it goes linear when you hit the, when you pull your parachute. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so here's my two equations. Forget about the story. Let's try to figure out how long before he released his parachute. So, if we set these two equations equal to each other, and they're already in the format of HT on both sides, so that makes it pretty easy for me to set up an equation here. All I have to do is set it equal to the other equation. Then you rearrange your equation by bringing things all to one side. I'm going to subtract 4t, that would be minus 3t, and 360 minus 142 is 218. And now I would use quadratic formula to solve for t. Okay, so I don't know if you need me to do that for you, but I think by now you should have uh, you should have this pretty well figured out. Negative b plus or minus square root. I'll do it quickly. b squared. Notice how I put this in brackets to make sure I don't make a technical error here. b squared minus 4 times minus 4.9 times c is 218. And don't forget the whole thing has to go over to a, 2 times minus 4.9. So I'm just going to give you the answer to this. I got uh, 7.2 and minus 6.2, which is inadmissible in the context of this word problem. In the context of the word problem, because time is never negative. So time has to be greater than zero or equal to. Let me just move this up a bit. Okay, so time has to be greater than or equal to zero. So that makes this an inadmissible solution. And he pulled the parachute cord, I guess that's what you call it, released. It says he released his parachute. His parachute at 
7.2 seconds. Okay, so let's, um, let's pretend this wasn't a word problem. It was just an equation where I gave you this problem and this line and asked you for the point of intersection. So this tells you when he released his parachute. If you wanted to know what height it was, then you would plug that back in here, right? So let, let's do that just for fun here. The height would be h at 7.2. h at 7.2. So you plug that back in. Again, I would choose the linear equation just because it's much easier calculation. I could probably even do this in my head. 4 times 7.2, that's uh, 0.8 and 28, and it's negative, plus 142. So you can finish that. Okay, but what I wanted to point out one more thing before I let you go, and that is how can we tell how many solutions there would be if this was not a word problem? Because it's a word problem, we can only have one solution, and that's when time is positive, okay? But there are two solutions. How would I know that from this equation? So once you have set equal to each other, and brought everything to one side, you can use the discriminant. We just talked about that a couple of lessons ago. You can use a discriminant to find the number of solutions. If, if, that's a big if, because this was a word problem if this was not a word problem. Because it is a word problem, time has to be positive. Time must be positive. So it depends on whether or not it's just a straight calculation that you're doing, or if you're working with a word problem, then you have to find, you know, make, make sense of it. You're not gonna say, oh yeah, he, he pulled it out 6.2 seconds before he even took off. <laughs> you can't have negative time. And he couldn't have pulled the parachute before he jumped out of the, the off the CN Tower. That would have been ridiculous. I guess it could have happened, but we don't talk about negative time. Okay? So that's all you have to do with linear quadratic systems. It's pretty easy. That wraps up Chapter 3. Hopefully you're all ready for your unit test. If you have any other specific questions you'd like me to solve for you, please let me know. Um, subscribe to my channel and tell all your friends that you can get some free, mighty good math help right here on YouTube with Ms. Havrat. Bye.